Today's lesson is 15-5, which is interquartile range and box plots. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to watch this video in cons called the interquartile range. And then when you finish watching that video, you're going to watch, you're going to write down the vocabulary listed here. So measures of variation are values that describe the variability or the spread of the data. That's measures of variation. The distribution of the data set shows the arrangement of the data values. That's the distribution. Now, the two things that help you with the distribution are the range and the interquartile range. The range is the difference between the greatest or the maximum and the least or the minimum of the data values in the data set. So the difference, the range is the difference, and of course the difference, you're just going to, that means subtract. The difference between the, the greatest number, so that's the largest number, or the smallest number. So this is going to be the biggest minus the smallest, big minus little, okay? The interquartile range is a little more involved. It is the distance between the lower and the upper quartiles of the data set. Now to find the interquartile range, we need to subtract the lower quartile from the upper quartile, and we will talk about how to find those in a minute. So what are we going to do with all of this data that we're finding? We're going to construct box plots today. And this is what a box plot looks like. Okay? So we're talking about box plots today. Uh, sometimes you'll hear them um, called box and whisker plots. Okay? Box plot, box and whisker plots. Okay? They use, um, they use a number line to show the distribution of the data set by plotting the median, the quartiles, and the extreme values, okay? Now we talked about, oh, well, let me just finish. The extreme values, or the maximum and minimum, are the greatest and the least values in the data set. It's the biggest and the smallest. Uh, the extreme, um, so the extremes, quartiles, and the median are referred to as the five number summary. Okay, this is the five number summary because, of course, one, two, three, four, five numbers. And this is how we organize it on a number line. Now, when you are creating your number, your box plot, it goes above the number line. It does not go on it. It goes above. Okay, so we are going to look at the median and we learned last lesson that the median is the middle number of a set of data when it is in order from least to greatest. So we know that one. The minimum is the smallest number. The maximum is the largest number. Okay? The median cuts the data in half. Okay? The quartiles also cut data in half. But the quartile 1, this is Q1, you'll also see it referred to as the lower quartile. Okay, so quartile one or the lower quartile, um, that splits the lower half in half. See, so here's the lower half, and it splits that data right in half. Okay, and the same thing with quartile three, and we'll call that sometimes the upper quartile. That, here's the upper half of the data, cuts that data in half. So, if, it, if the lower quartile and the upper quartile cut the data in half, they are also medians. So, the lower quartile is the median of the lower half, and the upper quartile is the median of the upper half. Alright, so for example 1a, we want to find the range and the interquartile range. It says the list shows the number of canned goods each homeroom collected this week for a canned food drive. Use the range and the interquartile range to 
to describe the data, how the data vary. Okay? So, first thing we want to do is we want to find the range and the interquartile range. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put this data in order from least to greatest so that we can find the data. I mean, find the range in the interquartile range. So the first thing we want to do is we want to find the range. And that is the highest number minus the lowest number. Okay, so this is the highest minus the lowest. So the highest number is 71 minus the lowest, which is 56, and that's going to give us 15. And now we want to find the interquartile range. Now, in order for us to find the interquartile range, we have to first start with the median. So I'm going to abbreviate the interquartile range as the IQR. So the median is the middle data item in the middle of the set when the data is in order from least to greatest. So here we have 10 numbers. So remember that shortcut I showed you yesterday? 10 divided by 2, or last class, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So that means we need to count from the beginning, from the front and the back. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, since we have two middle numbers, that means the median is going to be somewhere in between. Okay? So that's going to be 60 plus 61 divided by 2, and that, of course, is going to give us 60 and a half. Oops. Okay. So there's our median, and now we've got... Uh, to find the median of the lower half and the median of the upper half. So it's the middle number of the lower half. That's the lower quartile. So the median of the lower half is just the middle number. So here, there's five numbers here, so we're going to count, and you can already see it, the middle number is 58. And over here, the median of the upper half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, is 64. So that means that 58 is the lower quartile, or Q1, either way, and the 64 up here is the upper quartile, or Q3. Q2 would be the, the actual median, okay? So to find the interquartile range, the IQR, we take the upper quartile. Oops, I put up over here. I'm supposed to put UQ. UQ. So we're going to take the upper quartile minus the lower quartile, and that's going to give us the interquartile range. So we've got 64 minus 58, and that gives us 6. So what does that mean? Okay, so that means that for the range, what that tells us is that the data, the total data, all of this data, um, vary by a range of 15 canned goods. And the interquartile range tells us that the middle 50% of the data range by a can, uh, um, range, uh, vary by a range of six canned goods. So when it tells you to describe, okay, you guys, when it tells you to describe here, you need to make sure you write your actual sentences, okay? All right, so I would like for you to pause the video and do example B, 1B um, on your own. And then restart the video so you can see the solution. Since the average of wind speeds for several cities in Pennsylvania are given in the table here. 
We want to use the range and the interquartile range to describe how the data will vary. So we want to describe the variation of the data using the range, and we want to describe the variation of the data using the interquartile range. Now remember, in the end, you want to write two sentences to describe. So the first thing we want to do is put the data in order from least to greatest. Okay. Now you're going to notice something. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This has an odd number of data items. So for the median, when you after you find the median, you're not going to use it again to use to find the, the interquartile range. So here, first thing we want to do is we want to find the median. So the median middle number is 8.9 okay 8.9 is our median now we're not going to use it again so we can go ahead and cross that out okay so let me just scroll back up to show you the difference so here we had two middle numbers so we had to take the average of those two middle numbers to get the median and then we still are going to use we still used the 60 for the lower half and the 61 for the upper half. Okay, down here, that is the actual median, so we're not going to use it anymore. So that's why we cross it out. Okay, so the range is simple. First, we want to take the upper extreme or the highest number and the lower extreme, the lowest number and subtract them. That's going to give us the range. So that's going to be a 3.5. And now we're going to find the lower quartile and the, the upper quartile. Remember the lower quartile we're going to use this is the lower half. The upper quartile we're going to use that for the upper half. Okay. So the lower quartile is 7.6 and the upper quartile is 9.5. So this is the lower quartile and the upper quartile. Okay. Now to find the interquartile range, the IQR, we just subtract the upper quartile minus the lower quartile. Okay. So that's going to be 9.5 minus 7.6. So that's going to give us 1.9. So what does this tell us? That tells us that the data vary by a range of 3.5 mile per hour winds in the cities of Pennsylvania. And the middle 50% of the data vary by a range of 1.9 mile per hour winds. All right, so for example 2A, we want to interpret the box plots, okay? Now it says the box plot shows the length of the coastline of 12 states along the Atlantic coast. We want to describe the spread and distribution of the data. We want to know what does it tell you about the length of the coastline of those states, okay? Now, first thing we need to do is we need to understand the data items. And we also need to understand what what the size of the boxes you see these boxes they what those sizes mean okay so the first thing i want to tell you is that the the data okay if we're, we're looking at this data and let me just take that number line away first okay we're just going to look at the the shape of the boxes now we know that this is the median Okay, the median of the um, of the data, the median splits the data in half. Okay, the median splits the data in half. So that means that half of the data is over here, and half of the data is over here. Now that's fifty percent and fifty percent. You know those percents are equal, right? But if you look at the size of what we have here, this compared to this, 
they're they're not equal. Does everybody see that? Now, the reason they're not equal has nothing to do with how much data is in there, because fifty percent of the data is here, and fifty oops, and fifty percent of the data is here. So that means there's an equal amount on each side of that median. So if there were um, if there were eight eight numbers over here, there also is eight numbers over here because fifty percent is equal to fifty percent, right? So then what does it mean? Well, it means that um, though the data over here in the upper half is more spread out. So let's continue looking at the percentages real quick, okay? So we know that the lower quartile splits the lower half in half. The upper quartile splits the upper half in half. So that means if this is 50% of the data down here, then what percent of the data is in each one of these sections? Well, if the lower quartile cuts that 50% in half, what's half of 50%? 25%. So there's 25% of the data here, and there's 25% of the data there. And the same goes for the upper quartile. If the upper quartile cuts the upper half in half, okay, so we want to know what percent is here and what percent is there. Well, if the upper quartile cuts that 50% in half, then we have 25% of the data here and 25% of the data there, okay? Now, that doesn't look the same, does it? This is 25%. This is also 25% of the data. So 25% is equal to 25%, right? So what does that mean? Well, let's see. Let's say we had um, 16, let's say we had 16 data items, okay? So that means that there would be 8 over here and 8 over here. What's Because that median cuts the 16 in half, right? Now, if there's 8 over here, how many are in here? Well, what's half of 8? 4. So that means there's 4 data items in here. And there's 4 data items in here. That means there's four here, and there's four here. Okay, now look at how the data is scrunched together. That's all this is telling you. This data over here, there's four data items, oops, there's four data items in there, and there's four here. The size of the sections tell you how close together the, the data is on the number line, okay? So this, this could be all the, like 15, 16, 17, 18, right? This could be 20, 24, 28, 29, for example. Okay, you see how they're, they're further out, they're spread apart, spread apart? So the size of the sections tells you how spread apart the data is, or how close together the data is. And I'm going to um, po post this, this picture at the end, just so you can have it in your notes. So now that we know all that, let's go back to our example 2A. Okay, so here we have 12 states along the Atlantic coast. We want to describe the spread and the distribution of the data. And we want to know what does it tell us about the length of the coastline of those states, okay? So, when we're looking at the number line, of course, we don't know the exact numbers, so we're just going to estimate where these points land, okay? 
so let's let's see so we're counting by there's 50 in here so that means because we're counting by 50s okay see 50 100 150 200 250 300 350 400 we're counting by 50s so we can look at the range of the data and we can say that the range of the data the highest number is 300 and the lowest number let's estimate that to be about tw uh, 10. Okay. so the range would be 300 minus 10 which is about which is 290 oops 200 90. So the lengths of the coastline go from like 10 miles to 300 miles. So they, the range for the whole data set is 290 miles. The median is, is I'm going to say about 120, 120 miles. So the median is about 120 miles. So if we put the, the coastlines in order, the, the links in order from least to greatest, then the median uh, uh, length of coastline would be about 120. That tells us that half or 50% of the coastlines and this data set is less than 120 um, miles, and half of the coastlines are greater than 120. Does that make sense? So this remember, the median splits it in half. So 50% of the coastlines are less than 120, and 50% are greater than 120. So there's 50% and 50%. So the range, that's the one that tells us about the spread, okay? So the spread is about 290 miles. That's about, that's the spread. So if you look at the data, if you look at each one of the sections, okay? So we've got a section here. We've got a section here. We've got a section here, we've got a section here, okay? You can see that the, the sections where the, the numbers are closer together, that means that we have less variation. That means the numbers are closer. The lengths of the coastline are similar down here on the lower, the lower end, okay? And then there's more variation. That means they're spread apart more spread apart in the upper half, I mean the up in the upper three fourths of the data. Okay? So here in the in the lower one fourth of the data, right here, the coastlines are closer together. You see? Okay, so there's three and then here in this in this section here, they could be because we don't know the exact numbers, we could they could be like that and then same with oops, same with here in this section it could be more spread apart and then over here even more spread apart you see so that's that could be the the way that the data is distributed so there's less variation in the lower one fourth than we have in the upper three fourths or 25% and 75%. So here is a write-up of what we just talked about. It says the coastlines range from 10 to 300. The middle half of the data range from 30 to 190 miles. When I say middle half, that means this part in the two boxes. That's the middle 50%, okay? This means that half of the states have a coastline um, Oh, I'm sorry, the median is 120. So the median is 120. So that means that half 
of the state to have a coastline that is less than 120 and half of the data or half of the coastlines have um, our states have a coastline that's greater than 120 miles okay the spread of the, um, the data is about 290 miles now because a left the left side of the box of whisker are shorter than the right there there is less vari variation among the lower half that means the data values are squished closer together on the left hand side and on the right hand side they're further they, they could be spread further apart so for example 2b i want you to do the same thing as we did for example 2a it says the average gas gas mileage in miles per gallon for various sedans is shown in the box plot describe the spread and distribution of the data what does it tell you about the average gas mileage for those sedans? All right, so if we're looking at the data, first thing I did was I found the median, which was about 27, or which, not about, it's, it's at 27. And so since the median is 27, that means that half of the data is less than 27 miles per gallon, and half of the data um, half of the sedans have greater than 27 miles per gallon, okay? The range is from 22 to 40, so if I subtract that, that the range is um, 18 miles per gallon. That means, that's, means that the spread of the data is over 18 miles per gallon, okay? Um, let's see here. So just like in the previous example, um, what we have down here, because these are shorter, they, these are shorter on the left-hand side than they are on the right-hand side. That means that the data are more squished together over here, and there's more variation, or they're more spread out uh, on the right-hand side. So, for example, 3 A and B, we are going to construct and interpret the, the box plots. So, the table shows the cost of video games on a sale rack and an electronics store. Construct a box plot to represent the data. Then describe the distribution of the data. So, the data points that we need for the, to create a box plot, we need the median, we need the upper quartile, we need the lower quartile, and we need the extremes. We need the lower extreme and the upper extreme. So the first thing we want to do is we want to put the data in order from least to greatest. So here is the data in order from least to greatest. And let's see, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that means we're going to have one middle number for the median. So 11 divided by 2, so 2 goes into 11 5 times with 1 left over. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then the 1 left over, there's my median. See? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there's the median. So the median is 20, and don't forget, we're not going to use that median again. So we're going to go ahead and cross that out. So now we want to find the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So the lower quartile is the median of the lower half. So the median of the lower half is 17. And the upper quartile is the median of the upper half, 27. So we've got the upper quartile, 27. We've got the lower quartile, 17. Okay, and now we want the extremes. And of course, the extremes, those are just the lowest number and the highest number. So that's going to be 15 and 30. So here we have the lower extreme, which is 15, and we have the upper extreme, which is 30. So now we need to put this on a number line. 
So we want to go from 15 to 30. So I'm going to say we're going to count by fives, okay? All right, so let's count by fives, okay? So let's see, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. Okay, so that's how we decide how we're going to count. You look at the lowest number, you look at the highest number, you just make sure you include everything on the number line, okay? Now, to put this data on the, the, the graph, you're going to put a dot, no, you're going to put a line at the median, you're going to put a line at the upper quartile and lower quartile, and then you're going to put a dot at the lower extreme and the upper extreme. So the median is 20, so you're going to put a line right there. And um, I always say to, to also label that the median is 20, also label, okay? The upper quartile is 27, so here's 25, there's 30, so 27 is closer to 30, so it's about right there. And this is the reason why we put the number up there. So this is the upper quartile, and this is 27. You see, this is the reason why I put the 27 is there, because I estimated where that was going to be. Then we're going to put the lower quartile, which is 17, so that's going to be closer to 15, so that's going to be a line there, and that is the lower quartile, and that is 17. Then we've got the lower extreme, which is 15, Right here, you're going to put a dot. That's the lower extreme. That's 15. And then we have the upper extreme at 30. That's the upper extreme, 30. And now that you have all of this labeled, now all you have to do is connect at the top here, connect at the bottom, connect those lines. So there's the boxes. And then you want to connect the plotted points to those boxes, and there are the whiskers. So that is how you create your box and whisker plot. Okay? Now we want to um, describe the distribution of the data. So here you can see that um, the, the data varies from 15 to 30. The range is 15, so there's 15 values in between there. Um, you can say that the median is 20, the median is 20, so the, so half of the data is less than, uh, 20, so half of the data, or half of the video games cost less than $20, and half of that, those video games, cost more than $20, okay? You could also say that... Um, see how these are, the, the left side is a little more squished together, okay? So they have, um, the, the data here is closer together in the lower half and more spread apart in the upper half. So down here, because they are more squished together, that means that the lower 50% has, um, a greater consistency and the upper half has less consistent consist, consistency now also because the middle 50 percent of the data is um has a, a, a greater length than the the lower quartile and the upper quartile then we have less consistency in the middle 50% than we do in the other areas. All right, now you're going to do one on your own. So you're going to construct and interpret the box plot up here. It says earthquakes occur at different depths below Earth's surface. Stronger earthquakes happen at depths that are closer to the surface. The table shows the depths of recent earthquakes in kilometers. Construct a box plot to represent the data, then describe the distribution of the data. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to put this data in order from least to greatest. 
All right, so here we have our data in order from least to greatest, and we can see that we have 2 times 7, that's 14 data items. So that means we're going to have two middle numbers. So 14 divided by 2 is 7, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here are my two middle numbers. My median is right in between. So 5 plus 7, that's 12, divided by 2. My median is 6. Let's write down our data points that we're trying to find. So we need the median, which is 6. We need the um, upper quartile. We need the lower quartile. We need the um, lower, uh, the upper extreme. And we need the lower extreme. Okay. So now we want the upper quartile and lower quartile. Now, we just said we have seven numbers in, in the lower half and seven numbers in the upper half. So that means we only have one middle number to get to the um, quartiles. Okay, so we have, oh, let's see, seven, let's see, two goes into seven three times, so that's one, two, three, and then there is our upper quartile, and then one, two, three, one more, there is, our, no, sorry, that's our lower quartile over here, nine is our upper quartile, okay, so let's write that down, so the upper quartile is nine, the lower quartile is 4. And of course, so, so simple for the lower extreme, so lowest number, 1. The upper extreme, 15. So let's write that down. So we've got 15 for the upper extreme, and we've got 1 for the lower extreme. So now we have to decide what we're going to count by. Okay? So we've got from 1 to 15. How about if we count by twos? Let's see how that works. All right, so now I got all my stuff organized. Now we can put our information on our number line. Okay, so like I said, we're going to count by twos. So we've got 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. You just need to make sure that all of your data items um, are represented on the number line, okay? So again, we're going to put a line at the median, a line at the upper quartile, a line at the lower quartile, a dot at the upper extreme, and a dot at the lower extreme, okay? So the median is 6. So here's my line. That's the median at 6. Upper quartile is 9, so it's right in between here. So that's the upper quartile, 9. The lower quartile is at 4, so that's the lower quartile, 4. We've got the upper extreme, 15, which is right there. The lower extreme, which is 1. Right there. Make sure you label. Okay. And now we can connect. So you're going to connect the top of those lines. Oops. You're going to connect the top of those lines and the bottom of those lines. That makes the box. And then you can extend to the extremes. And that is what your box and whisker plot looks like. So now we want to describe the distribution of the data. All right, so we can see that the, the earthquakes range from 1 to 15 kilometers below the Earth's surface. Okay? The middle half of the data ranges from 4 to 9. That is the interquartile range. Okay? So um, the median there is 6. So that's the, the, 
the data, that's the data item that cuts the data in half is the median. So that means that half of the earthquakes occurred um, at a less uh, a depth less than six kilometers below the sur surface of the Earth's surface, and half occurred at a greater depth. Okay, the spread of the data is fourteen because we've got the range, which is fifteen minus one. That's fourteen kilometers. Now, if you look at the size of the boxes in the whisper, because the left whiskers over here and the left box are shorter than the right half or the upper half, then there is less variation in the lower half. Not by too much, but there is less variation. So this means there's less consistency um, in the lower 50% than in the upper 50% of the data. I'm sorry, I had to make an adjustment. I edited what I wrote here for, for to fix it. So that means that there's less consistency in the lower 50% than there is in the upper 50% of the data. So just as a reminder, here is the, the uh, length of the coastline this is the information that we wrote down before we did that example 2a and it was talking about the percentages on the box plot so i would like for you to make sure you have this in your notes okay so now you can work on your ixl homework which is calculate calculate quartiles and interquartile range Remember, when you do your IXL, you have to have at least 10 problems written in your notebook to get full credit for the work, okay? And then for this um, IXL uh, quiz, the box plots, you need to remember you only get one chance to complete that, that quiz. You do not get to retake it. So make sure you show your work and take your time.